Power BI only allows one type of relationship between two tables to be active at one time. But sometimes you need more. For example, here I've got data on concerts, but I want to show sometimes the data by when the concert date was, how many sales there were by when the concert date was, or sometimes I want to show it by when the tickets were purchased. So it is a different type of data that I want to analyze. So I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. My name is Dave and I'm going to have tons of videos on this stuff. Let's get going. So to start off with, you need a date table. And I have another video where I go through how to make a date table and all the considerations you need to do about dates. And then you create a relationship between date and the main date field from your fact table, from your data table that you want to do it. And then you need to create a relationship from the other one. Now, if you want to create a relationship, you go to the model view and you can drag and drop this one to this one. And then this will pop up and just make sure that it's kind of the same. You need to make sure that there are unique values in one. If you have a proper date table, then that won't be a problem. But of course, the same technique applies to non-date scenarios as well, which I use quite often. If I was to create a relationship between these two, it would be many to many, and that is not what I need to do. So make sure there is unique in one table, which is typically called the dim table, the dimension table. Note you have make this relationship active. This is unticked because my other one that I already have is active. If I were to tick this, it would tell me there is ambiguity because essentially it can't have two ones that are active. Now I'm going to untick this and press save. And then it's going to do this dotted line. Now if I want to switch which one is active, I can double click on this one. I can make this one inactive. And now I can go back to the one I just created between purchase date and date and make that one active. So that is how you can do it. But it is useful to have two relationships where one of them is activated by default and the other one is activated only by a DAX formula. So let me switch them back. There we go. And now let me do the measures. So over here, I'm going to create a new measure. Sales equals sum of sales at event. Close my brackets. Total sales equals that. Perfect. And this will actually follow the relationship of the concert date. So to prove it, if I was to create a visual like that, I am going to do it via a table. And there I have my dates. And if I do them alongside the dates from my date table, we'll see that they are going to be the same. There you go. So these are always the same as each other. Well, however, if I was to do this alongside my purchase date, then we're going to see that they are actually different. There you go. So this is a lot before, as you might expect, people purchase the ticket before they go see the concert. So what if I want to create a sales by purchase date? So I'm going to go to new measure. I'm going to say sales by purchase date equals, and then I'm going to do calculate, which is the function you use to modify filters. And I'm going to say total sales, the one I've just created, comma, where my filter is going to be this new function called use relationship. And use relationship needs to have the two columns that are in a relationship. So here I'm going to do purchase date. It just takes column one, comma, column two, and they need to already be in a relationship, even if that is an active, which is usually what you'd use it for. So purchase date and then date from the date table, dim dates like that. So close my brackets, once for use relationships, once for calculate, press enter, and then just to test it. So if I was to do sales by purchase date, now it's going to show it to me like this. And as you can see, the date and the purchase date are the ones that line up now, rather than this one and this one. So that's essentially how you do it. Uh, you want to do your number formatting. So I always like to do a comma style like that. And just to show you if I'd have done two columns that are not in a relationship, that it wouldn't work, it would give me an error like this. Great. So 
there it is fixed. I hope you've enjoyed that. My name is David Van Lama, and I have tons of videos on Excel, Power BI, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tickle the Workplace, I'm covering my channel. So subscribe if you want to see more information like this. Thanks for watching.